Hello and welcome. This is a review of a new feature in Dynamics 365 Supply Chain version 40 called Item Substitution for Formulas. Formulas are an equivalent of bill of material in process manufacturing environments. Basically, the way this function works is it combines similar or like items in our formula in one group. Each item in that group will be assigned a priority. The system will try to use the item with the highest priority first, that is, unless it has zero on hand stock. In this case, it will move on to the item with the second highest priority and will use it instead, so on and so forth. So the idea here is to create a formula for our production order that has an item that is available on hand because we have several items that can be used interchangeably. We would create a production formula that contains an item that is available on hand so we can proceed with our production. In this video, we will review several scenarios that are applicable to this functionality. Before we can do so, let's make sure that the function is enabled. We'll navigate to Feature Management Workspace and make sure this feature right here is enabled. It's only available in version 10.0.40 or above. In the next step, we will enable planning optimization. Go to Master Planning Module and go to Planning Optimization Parameters. Make sure that this checkbox is set to Yes and the status is connected. This is important because this new feature would only work when we execute master planning using a new planning optimization and not a legacy engine. Please note that planning optimization add-in is available to be installed only on tier 2 Dynamics 365 environments. Now let's take a look at the finished good item for which we will define our formula. Go to the list of all the release products. Here's FG100. This is a product that we will use. Now let's scroll to engineering tab and make sure that the production type is set to formula. This will allow us to define a formula for this product. And also if we navigate to manage inventory default order settings, we will make sure that default order type for the master planning purposes is set to production. Now let's navigate to engineer tab and go to formula versions. For this product, we have a single approved and activated formula version. It contains three lines, RM100, 200, and 300. You may notice that the first two items, RM100 and 200, are combined in the single plan group called logos. That means that either of those items can be used when we create a production for this item. You may also notice that each line has a priority. So RM100 has a priority of one, which is the highest priority, and RM200 has a priority of two, which is a lower priority. You may also notice that the second line, the line that has the lower priority, has a quantity set to zero, to blank. That is done intentionally based on the instructions provided in this Microsoft Learn article right here. Basically, it's asking to set up a quantity of zero for all formula lines except for the one that has the highest priority in the group. Now let's go back to the product. The last step that we'll need to do is to make sure that we have a demand generated for this finished good 100 item. I'm gonna do it via safety stock. I'll navigate to plan item coverage and in here I'm requiring to have five units on hand available in warehouse 24. Now let's run some scenarios. In the first scenario all three items in the formula around 100, 200 and 300 have zero on hand stock. Now I will go and I will execute planning optimization for this product and I will do it via net requirements form. This is the quickest way to generate planned orders for a specific item. Click on net requirements Click on update, master plan. I'm gonna do it for my dynamic plan and I'll include all bill of material levels. Click on okay. So planning optimization has finished. Now I'm gonna to go to the list of my plan orders. This is a list for dynamic plan. It had zero plan orders, but once I refresh my screen, I see three new plan orders. The first one is for our finished good FG100. And this one is a planned batch order, which is an equivalent of a planned production order in process manufacturing. We also see a planned purchase order for RM300. This is a third line in our formula that is not part of our logos plan group. It's on its own, therefore it's always going to be included in the formula. And because we have zero on hand quantity of it, the system suggests us to buy it via a plan purchase order. And then we have a plan purchase order for RM100. So the system picked only one item from our Logos plan group and it picked the item with the highest priority. And that is an item RM100. And because we have zero on hand 
quantity of it is suggest us to buy five units of that item right here. So this is a fairly straightforward, simple scenario where the system suggests us to buy an item with the highest priority in our formula. And you may notice I don't have a plan order for an item RM200 because this is not needed. If I select my planned batch order and click on derived requirements, I see that my item RM200, that's the one that should not be part of my formula because RM100 will be used instead, is still added to my formula. It's added with zero quantity. The better approach would be to not have a line for the items that are not needed at all. Now let's reset, let's delete all the production and plant purchase orders, and let's take a look at the second scenario. In the second scenario, both of our items in our logos group will have sufficient on-hand quantity. RM100 has five and RM200 has five. Now let's go back to our finished good and execute master planning for it. So now let's take a look at plan orders, refresh the list. Because we have item RM100 on hand, the system did not generate planned purchase order for it. Instead, it generated a planned production order for our finished good and then planned purchase order for that RM300, which we do not have on hand. And if we look at the proposed bill of material for our production order, right here we see that it's planning to use those five of item RM100 that we have available on hand. And the item 200, which we also have available on hand, will not be used because it has a lower priority. That's why the line here for this item is zero quantity. Let's go back, delete our plan orders and move on to the next scenario. In our third scenario, we do not have quantity on hand for our item RM100, higher priority item, but we do have quantity on hand for RM200, our lower priority item. Let's run the master plan. Let's take a look at the list of plan orders. So similarly to a previous scenario, we only have two planned orders. The first one is for the finished good, and the second one is a planned PO for the RM300. But if we look at the proposed bill of material for this planned production order by looking at derived requirements, we see that the system is planning to use five units available on hand from item RM200 and item RM100, which is a high priority item, which has zero stock, will not be used. Now let's take a look at the next scenario. In this scenario, we still don't have an item RM100 on hand, zero, but RM200, an item that we had full quantities of, now only has two units available. So we need five in order to build five units of the finished good, but we only have two available. Let's run master plan. Let's take a look at list of plan orders. Now we see that we have our normal production order for FG item, we have our plan PO for RM300, and we also see another plan PO for our higher priority item RM100, and the quantity here is three. Let's just better understand this. Select our plan batch order and click on derive requirements. In here, we see that the system is planning to use two units that we have available from RM200, our lower priority item. At the same time, it knows that it needs to have three more to complete the production. So it then planning to buy three more units of our higher priority item RM100. So here we have a mixture of two items being used on the same production order to create a quantity of five that is needed to complete it. That might not be necessarily the most optimal way, but this is the way the system currently functions. I'm going to delete our orders and then I'm going to say, well, what about if I wanted to use the same item that I already used and had on hand? Let's take a look at our next scenario. In our next scenario, I'll navigate to the formula for our finished good. And that's where I'll do something different, which is not described in the document, but I just was playing around with the system and decided to do that. So what I'll do instead is I'll change the quantity for my high priority item from one to zero, which is not the way it's described in the document. 
but then I'll create a quantity for our lower priority item, that the one that has priority of two, and I'm gonna change the quantity here to one. So I flipped the quantities in my formula. Save that change and let's run the master plan. Everything else remains the same. That means I still have only two units of RM200 on hand. Let's take a look at created plan orders. I see that the system now suggests me to buy three missing units from item RM200. So that's the one that I have two units of. And now the system suggests us to buy three more. And if we look at the proposed bill of material here for the finished good, we see that the system is planning to use all five units from the same item RM200. And it's not planning to use higher priority item of RM100 at all. We can conclude that the system is always suggesting us to buy missing parts from an item that has a quantity specified. Let's go back to the list, delete it, and take a look at the next scenario. What we will do in this scenario is we're gonna change the quantity back to how it was. So the item with the highest priority has a quantity and the item with a lower priority does not have any quantity. And we will also add two more units for our higher priority item of RM100. Let's take a look at this. So now you see that I have two units for 100 and then two units for 200. In total, I still need five, so I'm still one short. Let's see what's gonna happen. Run master plan, it's finished. Let's take a look at plan orders. So what we see here is we see a plan purchase order for item RM100. Again, this is a high prior item that now has a quantity in our formula. And if we look at the proposed bill of material here for our finished good, we see that the system is planning to use two units that we have available for our RM200 and together with one purchased and two available on hand, three units for item RM100. This tells us that if we are sure, the system will suggest to procure an item that has a quantity in our formula for that plan group. Let's delete these for the last time and let's run the last scenario. So this scenario is just to illustrate what if you populated the quantity for both formula lines by mistake. So in this case, both of my lines in the same plan group logos will have quantity of one. Save it and run master plan. And this is this cautionary tale. So if you made that mistake, you will see that the system will plan both items to be in our production formula. So it's not gonna pick one over another. It's gonna say both items have quantity even though they're in the same plan group it would still want to add both of those items to our production formula first let's take a look at the proposed bomb we see that the system is planning to use two units that we have available from item rm200 and then it's planning to use the rest from item rm100 but we only have two on hand so to fill that gap it will then go and generate a plan purchase order for rm100 for the missing six units This is just a few scenarios that would help you better understand how the substitution function in the new version of Dynamics 365 supply chain would work. Of course, there are many more scenarios. I would, I would encourage you to explore and try it yourself. In summary, there are a few things that I noticed that I wanted to share with you. Number one is I think this functionality should also work for the bill of materials. If I look at the formula right now, the fields such as plan group and priority are available in both formula and bomb forms but the functionality would only work if you are using formulas. I think that it should also be extended to the bill of materials because not all companies are using formulas and that will be beneficial for them to take advantage of such a great feature. And the second thing that can be improved here, I think, is if I turn my plan batch order into real one by firming it, and then reviewing that batch order, we'll see that it has a production formula right here. 
and it has the lines with zero quantity. That's the one that I think that can be improved by just eliminating lines in our formula that have zero quantity. That is all I wanted to share with you today. I think this is a great step forward, much needed in many different projects that I've been part of. I hope you find this video useful. Until the next time, take care.